Yeah, so um, we uh, this course, um, we are going to be looking at uh, uh, inner wholeness and um, and as the course, um, you may have read the description, we're going to be dealing with uh, the area of the soul um, in our uh, uh, our mind, our uh, will, and, and that entire uh, aspect that you know uh, that was left untouched um, when we were born again, right? So we're going to look at that aspect and how um, the emotional part of us, right? and how as believers, um, as uh, human beings, that uh, uh, the challenges that we face in that area, okay, um, that area can be a that part of us can be a source of great joy and learning uh, but also you know we could face challenges we could face limitations um, we could face uh, you know certain things that are really frustrating for us right um, like um, now I always think about it you know like um, for a believer to be frustrated um, it is this that when a believer knows that who he or she is identity is strong um, that this is who he or she is in Christ positionally and all the things that uh, God has given freely yet at the same time unable to make use of it or unable to make progress because of being limited in thought word and action you know and this area of a soul is very important because um, it can be a cause of great frustration it can be a cause of great challenge um, and uh, you know problems that we might be facing like uh, you know anger rage hatred maybe depression you know great sadness recurring sadness um, fears maybe anxieties uh, recurring anxieties recurring fears um, which which really hold us back with hold from uh, living the life that God wants us to live. Um, so, so this can be. Uh, so we are addressing this and saying, okay, um, you know, as human beings, we've probably you know journeyed already, you know, 20, 30, like 40, how many ever years, and so you know, it is in all probability, you know, we all already know. Okay, this is this is an area. This is a challenge for me. Uh, this is the thing that is. Uh, that is okay for me. This is a th this is an area that I need, you know. I need healing. I need restoration. So, you know, uh, in in the journey that we've made so far, uh, I'm sure that we are already, you know, facing those things. So we're going to be looking that, looking at that, addressing that in this course, in this course, and um, and um, and I'm sure that it'll be a, a time of liberation as well and healing, right? As we, as we <laughs> I'm sorry as we put to practice as we apply what we learn uh, in this course so just like uh, you know the who we are in christ course of the first semester this course also is a very practically practical one and where we can apply these truths immediately so we learn something um, and we can apply it and we can actually see uh, you know as we consistently apply these truths uh, in our lives that we we see the the benefit we see the fruit of it you know in our own selves and that is one aspect of it that we ourselves are restored made strong um healed and and so on um and and also the second part of it is that we personally we thrive you know this area becomes so strong in our lives that uh, that we thrive and flourish right um the other side of it is also that we get to um we get to serve others you know, minister to others this very same thing that we when we identify we can share with others um, what we have learned and what we have applied in our own lives and say okay you know this is something that uh, that can be done and uh, we can see the you know uh, fruit of it it's people being delivered people being uh, set free and uh, and it can be uh, you know we can be a uh, instrument in god's hands right, to bring these things to pass in our others lives as well so um so this is something that uh, we will be looking at in this course as far as um, grading is concerned uh, for for us as online students uh, it will be um, uh, two quizzes and the same would go for e-learning students as well there'll be two graded 
quizzes and the dates will be announced. Um, so the, the total of that will make up the score for the yeah, course. Okay. So let's um, let me just share the uh, uh, course material and it is uh, already uploaded um, for you so you can follow through. Um, okay. What's happening? Okay, sorry, sorry. I think I made a mistake. Just one second. Um, Yeah, it's come up. OK. Um, so uh, we are establishing some basics here uh, in this class. Um, so one of the first things that we will look at is that uh, we uh, we are tripod beings, right? We are going to look at uh, the fact that we are, uh, in fact, uh, three parts. Um, this is how God created us, that we are spirit, soul, and body. We are tripart beings, spirit, soul, and body. We have the the natural part of it, uh, us, or the physical part of us, is the body, uh, which uh, which of course ceases to function when we are dead and goes back down to the earth. Then we have the eternal part of us, which is the spirit and the soul. Okay, spirit and the soul. And uh, one Thessalonians five and verse twenty three uh, describes that beautifully. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and uh, verse 23, if we see, it says, um, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. right? Uh, and may your whole spirit, and the word used there is pneuma, soul, uh, spirit, soul, and the word used there is suke, from which we get, we get um, you know, psychology, the root word for all that, psycholo psychology, and body. And the word used there is, uh, you know, soma, or the flesh of the body. So, pneuma, suke, and soma, the body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so um, this gives information about uh, any human being that there is a spirit, soul, and body, and he, the person lives in a body, and the person has an eternal part, which is the spirit and soul. Right. Um, so. Uh, the Lord God, when He formed us, He Genesis two seven talks about the fact that He yeah He just formed man of the earth and then He breathed into man, He put into man something of Himself, and uh, and that we you know something of Himself which is uh, uh, the, the, His His spirit, uh, and uh, He breathed into man and man became a living being so we have the we are made in the image of god and we have the spirit and the soul and we have the body right so uh, if you look at 1 thessalonians 5 coming back to 1 thessalonians 5 it says um, may the god of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your spirit soul and body be preserved blameless okay so the lord says it says the lord wants to set us up aside may may the lord set you aside or sanctify you completely, uh, obviously for for His purpose, for His plan, to to be you know that's His will, that's His plan, that's His desire, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. You know? Let it be preserved, meaning let it be uh, protected from harm or danger. Let it be uh, preserved from, or let it be guarded from any kind of injury or loss. May it be preserved at the coming. Right? This, so the spirit and soul, um, and uh, of course we are addressing the soul. So we are, may it be preserved blameless, may it be protected, may it be guarded from any kind of damage or injury or harm at the coming of the Lord. Okay. Well, uh, the same message version says, may God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you, foot, keep you fit sorry, for the coming of our master. 
okay the lord who makes everything holy the one who sanctifies make you holy put you together spirit soul and body and keep you fit so uh, so we get this understanding that yes um, the lord wants us well in all these three realms spirit soul and body right so it's his desire um, it's one of the verses which talk about the fact that the lord wants us well spirit soul and body he wants us to thrive in all these areas and right? it's not that uh, that's his desire and that's his plan so we see that uh, may it be preserved blameless so the soul part of us um, the emotional part of us um, the suke right the mind and the will let it be uh, preserved blameless okay another verse 3 john and verse 2 okay uh, it says beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things okay so john is praying for the church and he's saying i pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul or the suke prospers right so um so he's praying the will of god he's praying the desire of god for man for the for the disciples um now for this particular church believers and he's saying this is what it is you know, i pray that you may prosper in all things i right? prosper physically prosper emotionally prosper spiritually um, and be in health right just as your soul or your suke prospers right so just as we watch out or look out um, for the well-being of our body just as we make sure that our spirit man is strong and is fed and is given the proper nutrition of you know, of the word of god and of the things of the spirit that is nurtured so also for our mind or our soul right and um, and, and one of the things that we need to be sure of is this you know the spirit soul and body aspect of it um, and it you know we've, we've been looking at it time and time again right, right from the first semester about the spirit soul and body um, and we need to be uh, uh, sure of it we need to be strong in it right uh, so uh, in the old testament some of these things are used interchangeably the soul and spirit but we see that demarcation um, you know very clearly um, and uh, right from hebrews 4 12 you know, Hebrews 4.12, which talks about the word of God being sharper than any two edged sword, pure, uh, able to pierce even to the division of soul and spirit, right? Uh, to know the um, intents of the heart and the thoughts. So, uh, so we need to be clear okay, what is the soul? What is the spirit? What is the spirit, soul, body? The body, natural part of it, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's plain. Right, plain for us to see and understand, uh, but we need we need to be sure. Whenever the Bible talks about the soul, it's talking about um, this aspect of us, right? So the emotional aspect of us, the uh, the rational, emotional, the imagination. So that part of us. Okay, okay. So uh, let's look at um, yeah. So we need to be uh, clear. So soul. What does what does it involve? What all does it involve? What all does it include? Know, our thoughts our reasoning what is reasoning when we when we um, apply our mind and when we when we give it uh, you know uh, when we think about certain things and when we reason so what is that word it means that we apply our mind and thoughts and information that we uh, we have received and uh, use that to come to certain conclusions right we come to certain conclusions right uh, is it right or wrong right it's it's also what we say as judging right we judge uh, we discern is it right or wrong is it uh, is it good or bad is it the is it a good decision is it the right course of action or not right should i do this or not so we reason right uh, it is also uh, what we call as imagination Right? We imagine, we uh, we create, we we are, uh, I mean, we uh, think uh, creatively. We imagine. Um, it is not there yet in the natural, but we imagine it. 
Okay, I can imagine um, this is how uh, we want things to be, right? We can imagine uh, and think about the next course of action. We can imagine, um, you know, what our future is like. So uh, the power of imagination or the ability to imagine. Um, and we can do it negatively also. You know, we can imagine uh, it might, while it, while it might, might not be the reality, we can imagine things going wrong. We can imagine, um, you know, us failing and being in defeat. We can imagine um, that things being, you know, us being miserable and, and all that. It can be uh, in the realm of our uh, mind, right, our soul. So it includes that. So you see, it's a, it's a very powerful uh, aspect of our, of us being a human being, the ability to imagine, the ability to reason, think. Right? Well, it also includes memories. Right? Uh, it's like um, our soul has a, a vast uh, memory bank right from childhood as far as we can go back. We have this you know, reservoir or you know deposit of all these memories, you know, things that have happened, good and the bad. Um, all those high points that marked our life and all the uh, all the lowest points of our lives. We have these uh, fantastic bank of memories and oh, excuse me. And, and and sometimes these are you know these are triggered. Uh, we we find ourselves you know uh, uh, thinking these memories are brought to us. We find ourselves thinking about certain things because maybe a conversation triggers or pulls out um, some some of these memories. Maybe some a place, maybe uh, uh, a, a song, right? Uh, a tune, uh, something, a word, maybe, or, or even sometimes a smell. You know, whatever input we get through our physical senses, you know, triggers those memories, and uh, you know, our mind has a vast bank of memories right and also thinking patterns right um, thinking pattern in the sense when we the way uh, the sequence of thoughts which lead to action okay that's a pattern so there could be a you know set pattern of thoughts uh, leading to certain actions uh, in our minds you know? so like this it could be good or bad Right, maybe under pressure. This is how we think. This is how we act. Um, when we are um, rewarded, this is how we think. This is how we act. Uh, when when we are faced with temptation, this is how we you know certain kinds of temptation. This is how we think. This is a thought pattern, and this is how we act. Um, uh, so, thinking patterns. So everything is in the area of our uh, soul, the soul realm. Right. So. Um, Okay, so what are the Bibles? Uh, whenever the Bible mentions the heart or the inner man and the flesh, you know, we need, just need to know the difference. Um, so whenever we think of, uh, whenever we talk about the inner person or the inner man, we are referring to the spirit and soul. Right? Inner man, inner person. Um, the heart. Uh, whenever the word heart, you know, I love the Lord your God with all your heart. Right, the heart is. Oftentimes, like most times, it's referred to the spirit of man. Right? And uh, in the Old Testament, the word leb, nepesh, is used. Uh, and it's used to, when we look at the context, we see that it is used for both spirit and soul right? interchangeably. Um, so it is uh, addressing um, you know, the spirit and soul. Like, for example, Genesis 6 and verse 5, a classic example. Right. Says so um, um, it's talking about what man is thinking, what man's imagination is, and uh, things that we would actually, you know, point out and say, okay, this is something to do with the mind, right? So here it says, uh, and man saw, and uh, God saw, sorry, Genesis six and verse five, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay, so he's referring to. We could say, okay, it's referring to the inner person. It could refer to the spirit and the soul collectively. 
thing because uh, of course we know that man had a sin nature and it's also talking about imaginations and uh, intents right uh, what he was what his mind was on so um so it's used for both spirit and soul right um and uh, so we know that <clears throat> the our inner person um in the old testament it's referred to um, collectively but in the bible we know that heart refers primarily to the inner person the inner man okay, which is spirit okay. um we we uh, also look at another word which is flesh and we see this primarily in the, um, the old test i mean sorry the new testament the way in the epistles so we see that the flesh refers to the appetites of the body okay so referring to the negative or the evil desires the you know inappropriate inappropriate desires or appetites of the body that is the the flesh but it also refers to our mind right our thinking right it could be the our emotions uh, it could be attitudes and right? it could be uh, certain um, uh, certain kinds of uh, thoughts so thoughts emotions attitudes right uh, also referred to as the flesh unrenewed thinking unrenewed mind uh, referred to as the flesh now, if you look, look at galatians chapter 5 now the works of the flesh uh, verse 19 now the works of the flesh are evident which means it's plain it's clear what are, the, what are the works of the flesh? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, um, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Okay, so if you look at this list, okay, you can see that certain things are actions, adultery fornication um idolatry sorcery drunkenness murders revelries some things are actions acts uh, or works then we also see things like uncleanness contentions jealousies um, outbursts of wrath uh, wrong beliefs heresies so we see these are referred these are you know in uh, emotions or you know thought processes so everything that is happening in the mind right so emotions uh, uh, also so we see when we look at the word flesh it talks about inappropriate or wrong desires appetites of the body but it also refers to some of these wrong attitudes or emotions uh, or uh, you know or strongholds you know what you would say of the mind Okay, so uh, so when we, we we're looking at uh, what is of the heart, what the Bible talks about the heart, as we can study the you know this whole aspect of soul, um, we see that it could be the uh, I mean when we look at the, the flesh, the word flesh, it refers to um, the body, the desires, appetites of the body, and also some of these things in the mind as well. Okay, so because we are going to be studying about that, and when we look at scripture, we see these things come come up. You know the flesh um, uh, in the epistles and right? works of the flesh so we need to uh, know okay this is what it refers to it refers to something that i do with the body but also refers to certain things in my mind okay which are not right before god right uh, okay then we let's look at uh, you know is there a difference between the brain and the soul Okay, so what is it um, when we th when we talk about the mind? Of course, we know that uh, all our, all our thinking and processing, everything happens in the brain. Right? So, is brain the same as a soul? So we see that when we use the word brain, we are referring to the physical organ, right? The physical organ, because um, you know that is what it is. Like when if someone were to um, do a surgery on us, and you know something to do with the brain they would be able to touch and feel and see okay this is what the brain is right? it refers to the physical organ um, but the soul is a little bit abstract 
it's part of us we do not see the soul right because it's uh, it is the mind it is the thoughts these are the imaginations these are the thought processes and thought patterns okay so it refers to us uh, and what happens psycho psychologically right? so the brain is a physical organ uh, which, which which shows up when we you know if a doctor were to scan and uh, do a procedure whatever um, while the person cannot actually you know see the soul part of us because it comprises of all this right so um, the mind affects the brain and the body that's another thing that we see that the mind that is our thoughts can actually have uh, uh, or can actually affect us physically. The physical organ also has the tendency to be affected and our physical being, our body itself has the tendency to be affected because of what goes on in a person's soul, right? Uh, so uh, these are referred to as um, uh, psychosomatic, like soma being the body, or psycho coming from the suke psychologically so psychosomatic which means that uh, things in the mind uh, or you know extreme sadness extreme stress affecting the body right um, but it has its root in our thoughts our thought processes and so on affecting the body like uh, like people sometimes complain that okay uh, I'm, I'm having this rash skin rash which is breaking out and uh, why does that happen? You know, every time stressed, every time I undergo great pressure, um, I seem to have this skin rash, right? Or, you know, um, I, I'm going through this difficult period of my life. Uh, maybe it's bereavement or something, and I'm unable to eat. I'm unable to sleep. So this physical uh, functions of, uh, you know, this appetite of, eating or um, you know resting which the body requires is affected because of some things that are going on psychologically right so we see there's a psychosomatic there could be even issues with the heart issues with you know certain other uh, organs of the body because of uh, psychological things so we see that uh, it's interconnected right? um, and the distinction is there uh, we see in scripture but it's you know we see that it is interconnected okay so yes so the problems uh what we refer to as you know something's problems or uh, when the soul is not thriving flourishing as it should but it's in fact it's struggling and right? we see that uh, this is these are kind of sicknesses of the soul emotional problems psychological problems okay and uh, let's look at some of them right uh, and then we'll take some questions okay uncontrolled temper okay person just flies off something triggers uncontrolled so they themselves are not aware or even if they are aware they don't seem to be able to bring things under control either the words they speak uh, or the action normally they would not but then then this um, you know, when they when they are angry, they just lose all control. Right? Maybe hatred. Right? Hatred for someone seems to be so deep rooted. It's not. You know, nothing will seem to change that. Depression. Right? Continued sadness. A sense of uh, a, a deep sense of sadness, which affects our being, which affects our regular functioning. Right? No matter what's happening, this is not it's not going away. Right? You're trying to do things, you're trying to do the things that you like. You know, maybe you're going to this place, trying out, you know, something, some new restaurant, trying to eat that, or you're trying to do things that you normally enjoy, you're listening to, but it's it's still there, it's just lingering, a deep sense of you know, uh, maybe a heaviness, like a depression. Okay. Then um uh controlling fears. Uh, and worry, anxiety, you know, just clubbing that together, fears, worry, anxieties, uh, which seem to limit us, uh, which seem to really control us, 
right? So that we are not our usual self, not able to do the things that we want to do. You know, there's so much of fear. Um, and then there is, uh, I don't know, like uh, when we went through the pandemic and then, of course, we came out of that. And then uh, a lot of people were really, uh, you know, held by or controlled by this fear. What if, what if? And so it, it took a long time for people to really step out, right? Um, and uh, and interact with others or, in, or step out um, of the confines of their home. And, you know, because of this fear, what if I get infected? Um, you know, controlling fears, worries, and anxieties. Right? A poor sense of self worth. Okay? They might be very skilled, they might be very talented, um, they might be very good at what they do, but having a poor sense of self worth, irrespective of who they are. You know who they are, what they have, the things that they there seems to be a sense, a very poor estimation of themselves. They look at themselves in the mirror and then they constantly tell themselves that they are no good. Uh, they constantly think that they are, you know, they are you know, maybe not good looking, they are ugly or not capable, you know. Um, so a wrong estimate of themselves, like poor self worth, then a deep seated rejection, right? Um, feelings of inadequacy, a deep sense of failure, feelings of insecurity, suicidal tendencies, lust addictions, and, and the list goes on. Right? Um, so this these could be some of the, uh, what we could call as a sickness of the soul, uh, problems of the soul. Okay, So these are some things that, uh, that limit us functioning the way we should function. Okay, So before we go into some of the problems that uh, that occur uh, in a person, or problems that a person could have because of problems in the soul. And before we go into that, maybe uh, if you, if at all, you have any questions or anything, any thoughts, um, you could share that. Right? Any questions at all um, at this point? Any questions? Okay, so we are so we are clear about uh, this whole area of the soul, what it comprises of. Okay, and we are also clear about uh, uh, what the Bible refers to when it when it mentions the heart or the soul. You know, we should be clear about that uh, and the distinction between spirit and soul. Right, um, we should be clear about that. Um, spirit, soul, and body, of course. Right? Um, we should clear. We should be clear about that. If there are any doubts, you know, any um, lack of clarity, um, feel free to ask. Get that clarified. Okay. Okay. So, if there are no questions, we'll we we'll just move forward. But I just want to, yeah, I just want to ask. Uh, um, just uh, mention that if if at all there are questions, you know, because these are foundational things, right, for a believer, and uh, and I can say that for a long time, you know, I struggled in these foundation areas, so uh, really couldn't pinpoint, you know, what was the issue, you know, what are some things that, and how are, uh, you know, how do I address this, and uh, and then once you know there was this whole revelation uh, the teaching. On the spirit and the soul and the body, and and then the things were clear. Okay, this is what happened when I was born again. This did not happen when I was born again. So that addressed that answered a lot of questions, um, right? Okay, me being a Christian, me being a believer, a disciple who loves the Lord, loves the Word. Then why some things are not going right, personally, right? Behavior wise, or it could be. Uh, even uh, you know attitude with regard to attitudes with regard to some of those things that are going on in the mind why is it you know, if I am a believer if I'm a new creation shouldn't that also uh, be different right so so once this this teaching or this truth was made clear then uh, all those questions were answered yeah so Isaac um, you have something to say, something to ask? Yes, Pastor. Yeah. 
<clears throat> I just want to ask a simple question. Um, um, now we are, we are talking about this uh, tripartite uh, uh, component of the human. Yeah. The, the spirit, the body, and the soul. Right. Yeah. I just want to know whether a non-believer has these three components. Of course, when we are believers and we are baptized, or in Christ, with the Spirit indwells in us, that we know. But yeah. for the case of a non-believer, does he have the Spirit? We already know that he has the body and he has yeah. the the soul. But does he have the Spirit also? Right. Yeah, Isaac, I think that's a very valid question. So the answer is that um, you know there is a distinction between the human spirit and the Holy Spirit. You know, that's a, uh, that's a distinction. So all of us as human beings, we are created spirit, soul, and body, you know, irrespective of whether we are followers of the Lord Jesus, whether we know Jesus or not. We are created spirit, soul, and body. So what happens to a believer is that when he is born again, his spirit is, you know, the Bible says it's made alive. And that um, you know that's a that's a word which refers to the quickening or made alive, um, being alive to the things of God, being able to respond to God. Right. So um, you know, like if you look at Ephesians chapter two and verse one, it says, "And you, He made alive." Okay. This is what Ephesians uh, two verse one says, "And you, He made alive, who were dead in trespasses and." sins so yeah so i was walking in sin i was walking in trespasses but physically i was alive right so but here Ephesians says you he made alive so he's referring to a spiritual quickening right uh, referring to something that came alive to god to the things of god so our spirit man was if you want to use the word, it was, you know, as the word, word of God says, it, it was dead to God, dead to the things of God, uh, or non-responsive or rebellious to the things of God. But when you are born again, our spirit man comes alive, which was made alive, and the Holy Spirit came and indwelt us. So, um, so that is the that is the difference, right? So, for a person who is not born again, who's not a believer, the spirit man is dead to the things of God, is alive to sin, right? Uh, like we, what we read in the uh, in Romans chapter six, we were we were dead uh, to the things of God and alive to sin. But now, since we are born again, we are alive to God, and uh, so so that's the that, that's the difference. I'm just trying to see the reference. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we are we are alive to the things of God. Um, uh, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. We are we are able to hear, listen, and receive. We pray, and uh, you know that your prayers are being heard, and and so on. You are communing with God, and it's because it happens in the realm of our spirit, right? So that's the difference: the human spirit and the Holy Spirit, God's spirit, who indwells us. So, um, so that um, that's the difference. So. Um, Yes, so every human being is born spirit, soul, and body. The spirit is dead to the things of God, but we are born again, we are alive to the things of God. We're able to receive revelation, receive uh, maybe, uh, you know, the, the word of God uh, uh, being quickened to us, uh, the rhema word of God, all that we are able to receive in our spirit, man. Does that answer, Isaac? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank right. you. Man. Uh, first, I have a small question. Yeah, John. Yeah. First, in Second Corinthians seven one, uh, yeah. therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Spirit. Is mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, just want to know, Pastor, like, is there work need to be done in even in the spirit as well, or uh, does this refer to soul? Um, yeah, no, yeah, actually, uh, it's very clear of the flesh and the spirit. So it means that our spirit man um, is a capable, you know, uh, yes, we are born again. And uh, but the spirit man is capable of being contaminated. 
you know uh, but how does that happen you know one of the things that we can look at is uh, probably you know this is my opinion uh, it could be maybe wrong teaching right things that i'm feeding um my spirit with um so that could be you know one uh, so so your, your question is okay what should i do in order to cleanse that right um so uh, in terms of is that right john yes that was your yes, yeah yeah so what should i so the thing is that uh, the the process is the same that we uh, you know we we renew our mind we bring ourselves in a position to uh, receive the things from god uh, or you know uh, receive uh, from him or uh, position ourselves make us available to his work work of cleansing work of uh, you know renewal and so on and uh, and the responsibility that has been given to us you know by the spirit we put to death the things of the body and that we intentionally renew our mind and uh, mind and thinking and ex and experience transformation so those are our responsibilities um particularly with the things of the spirit um we don't see you know any instruction apart from the fact that okay uh, you know when you feed your spirit man like uh, man should not live by bread alone so you take care of that um when we pray you know we are receiving the mysteries of god when you pray in spirit you know we are receiving the mysteries of god in our spirit when we when we pray in the spirit our spirit man is being uh, edified we are being edified referring to the spirit man being edified so so these are some things that we see that we can do uh, but specifically you know cleansing the spirit um uh, we really don't see but we also see you know uh, references like Ephesians uh, chapter 5 i think where uh, we are being washed by the water of the word so i think these are some some things that we uh, you know we continue to receive and uh, experience the, the cleansing work of the spirit in our spirit yes sir yeah, yeah thank yeah. you right, right. okay any other um, thought questions okay so we let's um let's look at uh, you know, this this part uh, of um sickness uh, i mean the problems related okay you just probably look at one we'll have time for that and then we'll um, we'll go on so when it comes to behavior okay behavior is what we actually outwardly do right the choices that we make uh, behavior and choices okay so if there is a problem related to the the soul or the, our thinking then then we see the outworking of it Okay, the outworking is maybe we could see some compulsive behaviors, some addictive behaviors. Like right? uh, we are addicted to certain things, addicted to certain habits, addicted to certain ways of doing things. Uh, it could also be impulsive, certain things that are repetitive, right? Um, what we would call as obsessive compulsive, you know, uh, maybe a obsessive uh, compulsive disorder. Right, so we see that okay. Uh, like I know of uh, uh, her of the person actually. I haven't seen it in action, but then I came to hear. I mean, I came to know that um, every time he leaves the house, he has to wash, you know, wash his hands multiple times, um, multiple times because his fear of uh, you know touching something or infecting or. Uh, you know, his hands be getting dirty, whatever. Yes, wash multiple times, um, and not, not only just leaving the house, but also throughout the day, right? You know, maybe we we wash a normal, you know, thing. Maybe when you get your hands dirty or your hands feel something, you know, it's grimy, you wash, or your before a meal, you know, you wash, right? But just think of it in an hour, you know, maybe five six times, just going washing so and and so much so that physically itself the the hands become like they are kind of pinkish reddish you know tinge because of the constant washing scrubbing washing scrubbing because you feel that something is there something is dirty uh, and you need to be clean so that's um, that's not a normal thing it's a compulsive behavior and where is the root of that and it's in the realm of our soul realm of the thought uh, there is a 
you know a wrong idea or a wrong thought that okay you need to do that you know it's a repetitive compulsive thing so that's a that's a behavior that's the fruit of it but the problem is actually in the area of the so right okay so th there are many more uh, and we'll look at each of them and we'll do, do that in uh, the tomorrow's class and we'll stop here okay thank you god bless have a great day